Ah, <clears throat> hello, hey everybody. It's Graham. Um, no, uh, hello. I see the assassins have failed. I come to you on behalf of the Sacred Order of Foolish Transparency and the Fraternal Regiment of Embodied Narcissistic Sociopathy. It turns out that yesterday, in the world we both seem to inhabit, the Apostle of Purpose himself, Jonathan Pajot, interviewed this uh, Robert Breedlove character, and I'm going to now make a commentary on that video called Decepticons, Dyson Spheres, and Dogecoins. Enjoy. Okay, so for starters, let's first let's first point out that this Robert Breedlove character opens the uh, the first two seconds of the podcast drinking from a, a drinking a mysterious liquid from a mason jar. Robert Breedlove, Robert was suggested to me on Twitter. I kind of asked a question: who people thought I should talk to in terms of crypto, and his name kind of came up on top. He is the host of the, the What Is Money show. Did his name come up on top because it, the tweet that had it in it was from your creative artist agency that Jordan Peterson signed you up with? Eh? Is that what happened? That tries to explain this Bitcoin to stuff. He has a past in finance and in crypto. And so uh, it seems like he's the guy to go to. And he, he's already told me that he thinks that there are ways to think about this and to understand, understand this in a symbolic way with a symbolic lens. So I'm really looking. Really looking forward to it. Now, the, at 12 minutes in, I say, I'm 12 minutes in. And every time you ask about the Bitcoin, he repeats the sales line. If I make it all the way through without you asking about A, doesn't Bitcoin end up in the Dyson sphere? Or B, what happens when Bitcoin mining drives up the cost of electricity? I'm going to call this video a video that leaves you uninformed. So, <clears throat> now, he made the video that left me uninformed. I'm going to re remedy this uninforming for you. But first, let's watch some more of this. Maybe this part. Um, there were essentially... It's a layered protocol for moving information without permission across space and time. But the one thing that it lacked was the ability to move value, economic value across space and time without permission. That's what Bitcoin adds without permission. to the internet. So Bitcoin without permission. fits right on top of the internet. It, it, is, it is part and parcel of it. All of these other coins, people call them altcoins. Uh, more pejoratively, people call them shit coins. What? Uh, this is the Jonathan Pajot channel, buddy. Look, I, I dis this is I guess drinking water while someone says something is how you disavow what they're saying. What they're saying. Oh, my water is in. Oh. What they're saying. Okay, so that was that part. That was that was bad. But there's this one part I marked as there's the BTC quote. Oh no no, there's this really good part John does. Hold on. This part is pretty hot. Watch this. The internet and the problem of this, this potentiality. So one of the things that happens when something presents itself as a wild potentiality, you know, uh, and the internet is an example of that, where the internet presented itself at first and still a little bit now as infinite possibility, right? No borders, no authority, you know, total almost anarchy of discussion, anarchy of possibility, anything can happen, anything is possible. Um, and that was that, that that's kind of how it was presented to us, right, in the late 90s. And now we could say the opposite of that. We could say mm -hmm. the internet is the system of control, the most total system of control that has ever been invented in human history. That, that, there are, that, that, that social media, these systems that are out there mm -hmm. are able to read your thoughts, are able to predict your movements, know everything that you're gonna do, everything you're thinking, um, and are trying to direct that ideologically in ways that has never happened in the entire history of humanity. Right? And so what I'm trying to bring about is that the, you hear that, everybody? The algorithm made me. Idea of like pure potentiality, what it calls for. It's almost like it's calling for a master. And so it, it's it's like if you, the real world is like a balance between potentiality and actuality. Like the real world is this this kind of this ebb and flow. It's like normal masculine, feminine, this, these, these, this kind of relationship between opposites. Okay, now here's the Bitcoin quote. You, know I mean? you realize it's just purely theft integrated into the money. Mm. This is the only way to optimize trust in a society. So it's, we're, we're moving from trust and authority to trust and self-interest. 
That's what Bitcoin does. It's you're trusting the self-interest of every other market actor. And what else is there to trust in a Darwinian world other than self-interest? You have to trust that everyone's going to operate in their own self-interest. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Like, yeah, like yeah. the free market that, that paradoxically creates the, these selfless outcomes from individual pursuit of self-interest, Bitcoin's the same. It's a free market money that I, by choosing to hold my Bitcoin and secure my wealth independently and verify my wealth independently, I'm actually voting against the system of time theft that, that the central bank represents. It's in my best interest to keep you watching this show until YouTube recognizes my ability to sell commercials to you. It's easier to sell commercials to you if you're not informed and, and easy, easily manipulated into reacting all the time from the steady dopamine drip of your leash. I mean sell. I mean phone. <laughs> it's smart. And therefore voting for something more positive. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Now, now, let's, let's deliver. Let's deliver, ladies and gentlemen, on Decepticons, Dyson Spheres, and the Dogecoin part <clears throat> of the show. Thanks, John. You guys were great. Good job, Robert. Good job. Wait, it was one other quote. Oh, control comes in at the exchange or internet access layer. They're talking Ooh, about the Bitcoin is uncontrollable, but they can control whether or not you can get to it. And I don't know, and electricity, whether or not you have electricity. And speaking of electricity, check a long time ago. When did I see this shit? No, 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 no. Don't touch me. No, 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 no. Okay, I don't know when. There's a date here somewhere. Bitcoin miners are flocking to central Washington for cheap electricity. Cryptocurrency mining machines use a tremendous amount of power, and the mid-Columbia utilities of Washington have long had some of the cheapest rates in the world. That's right, so there's a, it's worthwhile to move your mining operation to where the electricity is cheaper. Therefore, there's something to do with electricity and and Bitcoin mining? What could it be? What could it be? Today is known as the primary fuel source of all transformers, Energon. Energon has a complex history. In the decades since its introduction, many different series have expanded on the concept, building on one another to redefine its place in the Transformers universe as we understand it today. It's gone from being simply a kind of fuel to being absolutely ubiquitous in Cybertronian culture. It powers Transformers' bodies, their machines, their weapons, it flows through their veins. For a race of robots, it's food, drink, fuel, blood and medicine all in one, valued more than anything else, to the point that they even use it as currency, even- Now, you see, as electricity, <clears throat> as electric, as electricity, Okay, so the way I understand Bitcoin mining works essentially is like there's going to be one. And when it finishes, the miners that are mining, when it finishes, one of those guys gets the, the, the coin. Okay, so it makes mining lots of things worthwhile, which makes it worthwhile to buy cheap electricity, which means eventually the price of electricity will skyrocket to the point that only the Bitcoin miners can afford to buy the electricity. At which point, humanity will build a Dyson Sphere to get the last two Bitcoins out of the Bitcoin system. A Dyson Sphere is a hypothetical megastructure that completely encompasses a star and captures a large percentage of its power output. The concept is a thought experiment that attempts to explain how space-faring civilization would meet its energy requirements or how Bitcoin would make enough Energon cubes. Now, I also said Dogecoin, and the reason I said that is because the symbolic audience here of Pajo, one of the fellows in it, where is it? I, there's a thing that says Doge, wait. Control F, Doge. Aha, I really wanted the dog-headed coin to come up. Did the elevation of a dog-headed gesture coin lead to the end of a cycle? Obviously, this was recorded before the major crypto so of May night. The dog-headed coin, right? The St. Christopher one? Eh. Don't buy back the doge now that it's low again, guys. That's all. I mean, this is not financial advice. This was a commentary on this uh, Dangers of Bitcoin video. Energon cubes, guys. Dyson spheres, guys. Doge coins. That's that's what it is. Oh wait, no, that's not my tagline. Fuck. Ah. Uh, mm, um. Mm. Commentary. Commentary. Say it again. Commentary. Thank you. 